Now, you might want to book your dream vacation to Miami Beach as soon as you can, because this whole area might be underwater in the next 75 years. But it's not just Florida. Parts of Louisiana, California, and Washington are also expected to be among the first American states affected by sea level rise. If you live in the United States, you can check for yourself whether your address is on the list of cities that will disappear. Just search for Sea Level Rise Viewer on Google. That will take you to a tool created by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And it helps us visualize what coastal flooding might look like in the future. Now, you see that dark area in blue? Those are the sinking cities of the US. And by that, I mean cities that could be submerged by 2100. That's in the worst case scenario, if ocean levels were to rise by as much as 10 feet. Hopefully, it won't come to that. As you probably know by now, sea levels are going up because the Earth is getting warmer. When the planet heats up, ice at the North and South Poles melts, and all that extra water flows into the oceans. Plus, warmer water expands and takes up more space. So between the melting ice and the expanding oceans, sea levels slowly rise over time. And that means more flooding and even the possibility of some cities ending up underwater. Right now, statistics show that sea levels are expected to rise by around 6 feet by the year 2100. The problem is that this could cause major coastal flooding, and not just during storms or heavy rains. Even on clear days, some areas could end up underwater. And that brings us to a question. How do we actually know how high ocean waters are? These days, experts can measure sea level with incredible accuracy, thanks to satellite altimeters. That's basically a special type of radar that measures how high something is. It figures out the height of the ocean by timing how long it takes for a radar pulse to travel from the satellite down to the surface of the sea and then bounce back. When scientists combine that data with the satellite's exact location, they can map even the tiniest changes in sea level all over the world. Right now, coastal flooding predictions are showing us something serious. The rate of global sea level rise has doubled over the past three decades. And there are plenty of tools online that help us to visualize just how big this problem could become in the future. The sea level rise viewer I mentioned earlier focuses on areas within the United States. But if you don't live there, you can still check if your address might be in danger. Just look up the interactive map from Climate Central. If you set the water level to 10 feet above the high tide line, you'll see that a lot of countries could be seriously affected. Let's take a look at South America. In Argentina, for example, rising waters could flood many parts of Buenos Aires province. Head over to Brazil, and you'll see that a lot of cities, including Rio de Janeiro, would be affected. We might have to say goodbye to that iconic wave pattern sidewalk along Copacabana Beach. And both of the city's airports would be flooded too. Things don't look much better in Europe. Major cities like Lisbon in Portugal, Valencia in Spain, and Rome in Italy could end up partly underwater. Honestly, the worst situation in Europe is probably in the Netherlands. Right now, about a quarter of the country is literally below sea level, and nearly half of it sits just three feet above. So if sea levels rise, they are facing some serious risks. This entire red zone which includes cities like Amsterdam and Rotterdam, would be below the surface if the ocean rose by 10 feet. Fortunately, the Netherlands is probably the country with the most experience in fighting back against the sea. For years, they have tackled the threat with massive infrastructure. Things like giant canals, windmills, and dikes, all designed to manage the water. And thanks to their efforts, the Dutch have reclaimed about 20% of their land from the sea. That's right, they're actually expanding. Unfortunately, some countries are at much higher risk than others. According to estimates, about five of them are in serious danger of disappearing in the near future. First up is Fiji, a tropical paradise loved by tourists. This nation is in a tough spot because of its low-lying landscape. There, extreme warming could cause sea levels to rise by as much as 6 feet by the year 2100. It doesn't help the fact that Fiji sits right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where massive storms can quickly turn things into chaos. That means people there need to brace themselves for more frequent flooding, 
and they're already taking action. To protect against coastal erosion, some communities are lining the seashore with old tires to keep sand from washing away in stronger waves. Others are planting mangroves across the coast. These trees can reduce the height of waves hitting the shore by an average of 31%. Plus, they help cut down wind speeds, which really matters during cyclones. Next on the red list is Vanuatu. This chain of islands, located between Australia and Fiji, could be underwater sooner than we think. And they're already making changes. Vanuatu is one of the first Pacific nations to relocate an entire community to safer ground. Back in 2005, people living in vulnerable areas on the North Island of Tegua moved to higher land. With temperatures continuing to rise, they're bracing for even more intense tropical cyclones. That means heavier rainfall, more flooding, and a much higher risk to both homes and infrastructure. The Marshall Islands are also facing a serious risk. This country is home to around 39,000 people and lives on the opposite side of the world from the United Kingdom. It's an extremely low-lying island nation built on what's basically a coral reef. According to NASA, sea levels there have risen by almost 4 inches over the past 30 years, and they could rise by about 7.5 inches over the next 30. And that's no small thing. If nothing is done, the islands could face more than 100 days of flooding every year by the end of the century. People over there are afraid of losing their homes. Studies also show that up to 40% of the buildings in the capital city, Majuro, could end up underwater in the future. But this country isn't ready to give up, and they're reinforcing the infrastructure. The Solomon Islands are also being slowly swallowed by the sea. This region has been experiencing sea level rise at nearly three times the global average. Over the years, satellite images have shown that five vegetated reef islands have already vanished beneath the waves. On the bright side, the people there are working hard to protect their homes. They're building stone walls along the coast and planting mangroves to hold back the water. But the worst case might be Tuvalu as it could become the first country to turn completely uninhabitable because of rising seas. This island chain, located about halfway between Australia and Hawaii, sits only about 9 feet above sea level. And in its narrowest spot, in a place called Fungafale, the land is just about 65 feet wide. You can see how vulnerable the situation is, right? I mean, even before the higher tides arrive, the country's limited farmland could be affected by salt water. These islands are a powerful example of resilience, and a reminder that sinking cities don't have to mean disappearing ones. While the challenges are real, the global response to sea level rise is growing stronger every day. Around the world, communities are adapting, innovating, and coming together to tackle the threat of rising water. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.